What is the critical path method in construction? You've heard about critical path, but what is it? And why do I, Jason, sometimes get after it? Should you be using it? And what should you know about from a realistic data standpoint? We're gonna cover that right now. The critical path method, or CPM, is a technique where you identify tasks that are necessary for the project completion and determine your schedule and flexibilities. A critical path in project management is the longest path of activities that must be finished in time for the overall project to finish on time. So that is the definition. I'll go through the steps to build a CPM schedule here in this video. But let me say that you can use programs like P6, Microsoft Project, Asta. There's a number of softwares that do this, that do CPM scheduling. And when I talk about this today in this video, I'm talking about traditional or original CPM scheduling, not any builder version that you might have modified. So let's talk about it. Step one, specify each activity, name it properly, with the verbs and the nouns, and make sure that you have the right duration as best you can confirmed with the trade partners and from historical data and production rates. So the first step is to actually get your activities identified in the software. Second, identify activity dependencies. This will create your activity sequence, and this is done through logic inside the softwares, or if you do it by hand, you will draw that logic, whether it is a start to start or a finish to start, or a start to finish, whatever the logic tie is, that is what you're expected to use to link the activities together in a proper sequence. Step three, draw the network diagram. Once you have all of the activities together, it will link together through the logic and it will create a diagram. Now, if you're on a computer, this is easy to see. When the uh, folks in, back in the day used to do it by hand, they would draw it out. But seeing that overall network is key. And you can see it in a Gantt format or as a precedence diagram, and you can actually see better the dependencies or the logic ties. Step four, estimate the completion time for your network, for your schedule, or for your phase, or for your activities in general. Make sure you have the right durations and make sure that it fits within the overall duration that it is expected for that project. Step number five, identify the critical path. And so basically what the critical path will do and I'm gonna simplify this, but it works off of an algorithm and it ties your activities together from start to finish. And it will take the path that's identified through logic and it will add up the durations and it will link all of those paths together and find out what is the longest path. And then it will find the longest path by doing a forward and a backward pass and that longest path will become your critical path. And then all of the other paths and each individual activity will end up having what's called project flow and free flow. That means if the longest path was 128 days and there's an activity on the path that's at 124 days, that'll have a total project float of four days, which means that that can shift four days before it's critical. So your critical path is your longest path that must be completed for the project to finish on time. And then step six, you update the diagram to make sure that your schedule is tracking and that you are identifying any problems and creating recovery schedules and monitoring your critical path and the success of your project. So those are the steps in the critical path method. The critical path method is typically designed to create an overall network of activities with a critical path to identify a start and an end milestone or to confirm that the start and the end milestone can be hit within the schedule. The problem is that there's a practical way that this scheduling system is used. And there's a couple of problems with it that I wanna to talk to you about right now. Number one, it looks complex. So people get a false sense of security thinking, oh, well, that's a complex schedule, it must be right. But schedules as they're created the first time are never right. And the key is that the project team must be able to see the plan to correct it, which then leads us to problem number two, which is the schedule is not easily read understood and seen. Usually it will end up being multiple pages, if not like hundreds of pages, with a number of activities that are so detailed and described, it's like reading a book. Trade partners don't read them, workers don't read them, foremen don't read them, you've got a problem now, now one person has created a schedule with thousands of logic ties, no one really knows what went into it, they're assuming it's right, and no one can see it, check it, and make it right. Which means that number three, we have a problem with flow. So the most important part 
of a construction schedule is to make sure that we have that diagonal trade flow, which means that trades can flow from area to area to area to area in order to accomplish their work. In a CPM schedule, you'll find when you filter that, that the trades are stacked right on top of each other, which is impossible, which means your critical path is wrong, which means that your end duration is wrong, which means that you're gonna crash land that project and you're going to have problems and hurt people. It really, really is a system that is quite ineffective. Problem number four, it's hard to update. Once you see, oh, there's a problem, even if you see that there's a problem, you're like, oh my gosh, there's hundreds or thousands of activities here where I would have to change all of the logic and spend hours or days fixing it. And so that demotivates people and they tend to fix it in time and not keep it up to date because it would take so much work, which means now you have a schedule that's out of alignment with the field. And the last one, because I don't wanna abuse this topic too much, is that the owner will abuse you typically with a CPM schedule. Here's why. Anything can delay your project. Your project is a complex system. It is not a single longest path. And so if you get a delay that doesn't register on the critical path, your owner is gonna say, sorry, don't know what to tell you. End date's the same, figure it out don't care about your problems, no money. Contractors then gonna push trade partners. Trade partners are then gonna push foremen. Foremen are then gonna push workers. Workers are then gonna be fatigued and yep, consequently have the highest suicide rate that I know of in construction, okay? Even that above veterans, even that above accidents in construction, right? So now we have this chain reaction, but still we have the end date. And so the owner force, 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 forces and pushes because they don't know how schedules really work. And then the team starts to panic. They start to dissolve logic. You incline the schedule at the end and the entire project ends up finishing later because panicking extends projects. Stability shortens them. And so that is a fact. So the problem is, in our industry, owners use CPM schedules to rush contractors, to deny time impact analyses, to deny claims, to deny reality, to push people, to dissolve logic, to contractually lock people into impossible schedules and plans. Even the consideration, like if you said, if I asked anybody on this video, is construction ever perfect? You would say, no, no, Jason, it's not. No, okay, okay. Do any activities ever just go right the first time? No. If I said, everyone raise your hand, if, pro if you've ever had a project where everything went perfectly, no. Then why do we have a path marking an end date on a schedule that is assuming everything will go perfectly? It is not right. It is not how things are done. We should never ever have schedules that have a critical path or a longest path that doesn't also have buffers or schedule contingency. It's not a thing. Your project will delay, you will have problems, and in a CPM schedule, when that happens, you will dissolve logic and hurt people. So if you're going to use CPM, if you have to, which is not an argument I agree with, then you have to make sure that every path has proper trade flow, that the phases are built properly, and that you have buffers, and that if you want a critical path, it must go through that path with buffers, and the owner must acknowledge the buffers, and the owner must acknowledge that anything in your network can delay a project, it's not just what's on the critical path. And so I want you to know about this. I don't want, you're like, oh, you're criticizing critical path, I learned about it in school. Hey, every time you hear something new, your mind is gonna think a couple things. It's not relevant, I don't have enough time, enough money, enough people, and I don't need to do it because my company didn't tell me to, right? Anytime somebody says or suggests a change, your mind will think of those things. So right now you're thinking, ah, Jason's wrong. No, I'm not. Every single aspect of a CPM schedule is designed to counteract the productivity of your people. Every single aspect of CPM scheduling will hurt your project. Every single aspect of a CPM schedule will hurt the project team and disconnect them into separate silos. You need to know this if you're going to counteract it. And so if you have to use CPM, again, must have buffers, you must have trade flow, you must find a way for that team to understand what the plan is, which you cannot do with traditional CPM. And so I'm gonna link you to a blog post that explains this and tells you what you can do about it, how you can use the TAC production system, Last Planner and Scrum to schedule your construction projects and how you can get past those nasty contract requirements. And for all of you owners out there, it's just time for us to be done. I'll even help you for free, that's my offer. I will come help you on your project owners and show your contractor how they can run their schedule without suffering the abuse of a CPM schedule. I will help you 
call me. It's time for us to be done with this. So yes, a CPM schedule is a schedule that identifies the longest path, but you should never have a longest path and you should never use that longest path to abuse people. Please check out the blog post below. I love you all. I hope you've enjoyed this video or at least learned something from it. On we go.